These are Japanese Defense Forces training to repel a Chinese invasion of the Senkaku Islands. And America has pledged to defend Japan in any such conflict. Therein lies the tale. It now may be only a matter of time before an increasingly well-armed People's Liberation Army attempts to take the Senkaku Islands by force. How will America and Japan respond? I've personally seen at least one possible future less than 30 miles down the road from where I live in Southern California. At Camp Pendleton, Japanese Defense Forces regularly train with U.S. Marines. One of the top war games is defending the Senkakus from a swarming Chinese invader. Here are some of the experts I interviewed for my book, Crouching Tiger, What China's Militarism Means for the World. These are their thoughts on a seemingly intractable dispute between two historical Asian enemies that could drag America into war. Why should America die or fight for a couple of rocks off the coast of Japan, the islands? That's the question being raised. Well, the answer is we have a treaty obligation with Japan. We convinced them to basically step back on their military. And I think it would be only prudent to put a marker down and we have an agreement to do that and we built forces to do that. Those are rocks. They're not important to anyone. They're not important to Japan. They're not important to China. They're not important. They're certainly not important to the United States. The Senkaku Islands are both rocks in the sea and very important. <laughs> and herein lies the controversy. We look at it, we, show, we see these pictures of these clumps of rocks and we think, why should we care, right? But here's the point. The UN law of the sea, right, denotes, ex exclusive economic zones 200 nautical miles out from land features. An exclusive economic zone then gives a country access to the resources, the maritime resources, right? So those are, uh, those are resources in the water, so marine resources, fisheries, right? We all eat and love fish, so that's, that's an important resource. That it's, it's, we shouldn't un underestimate the impact of that, right? So islands, rocks, islets, right? Under the under UN Law of the Sea, islets and rocks don't count. Islands count, so everybody is desperately trying to call them ev these formations islands. You know, we see this with, for instance, the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea, eight barren outcroppings. And people wonder, why should Japan care about them? Well, Japan should care about them because the Chinese are acting like classic aggressors. Beijing has built them up into a matter of national survival. And because it's done so, it cannot compromise with the Japanese. The United States has consistently said, under multiple administrations, that the U.S.-Japan mutual security uh, relationship covers the Senkakus, because those islands are under the administrative control of Japan. And I believe that, as with other treaty commitments, any decision to walk away from that commitment will have devastating consequences. So if I were to be asked to the White House to talk to the chief executive, whoever that was, um, in a situation where the Chinese have seized uh, the Senkakus, I would be advising the president that he m must stand firm with Tokyo, make very clear to Beijing that this would not be allowed to stand, and to extend support, including weapons, including American forces, to the aid of the self-defense forces in retaking those islands. Do we go to war with the Senkakus or not? And it'll depend a lot upon how China does this. If China starts the war by sink a carrier, we're probably in because we don't respond well to sneak attacks or killing large number of Americans. If they actually land on the Senkakus, then we have two options. We can try to take it back with physical force and amphibious landing, or we can make the, the islands unusable. And there are plenty of modern weapons, thermobaric weapons. A thermobaric weapon is a weapon that spreads a fuel air uh, mixture. It, it, it disseminates fuel air all the way over and then it detonates. So it goes into the holes in the ground, you, you breathe it in, and then it detonates, and it, by overpressure, kills. The Russians use thermobarics in Chechnya, uh, handheld RPG-type thermobarics. They're a devastating weapon. So China comes, takes us in Cochrane. We wipe out every Chinese soldier on the islands. What happens on the mainland in terms of their nationalism? 
Well, that's the problem. Nationalism will get going. That's why I said there's, there's no accounting for stupidity. Uh, so you have to be prepared to fight. Uh, another option is quarantine. So to the extent that China's been sloppy in its preparation of how to route in supplies for a small contingent it might place on the Diaoyu Islands, maybe we decide that, you know, um, we'll give them water and a little bit of, of rice, but otherwise nobody's getting into that island. And now that is dangerous because then China's going to be tempted to try to break that blockade. And so I actually think there's an argument, if you get to this ugly scenario, to just do economic sanctions first and maybe some military base uh, augmentation in the region and try to give China some time to rethink what it just did and maybe find a peaceful way out. How would a war with China start? I think the most reasonable idea um, is that it would not start because the United States or China decided we want to go to war with you. I think right now uh, the most likely cause of war would be a miscalculation. Um, China decides, for example, that um, it can take the Senkakus and Japan is too weak and the United States is too weak or else the United States is, will not honor its treaty obligations with Japan um, or the United States will find itself too occupied with other things in order to support the Japanese. And so the Chinese decide, okay, now we're going to do it. And then it turns out they're wrong. Um, that Japan defends itself vigorously, calls on the United States on its treaty, the United States to honor its treaty obligations. The United States honors its treaty obligations in the expectation that it can contain the conflict over the Senkakus in, and resolve it in favor of Japan, but the calculation is wrong and, it, and the war widens. That is much more likely than a conscious decision in Beijing. Today is the day we're going to attack the United States, sort of the way Tokyo did in December of 1941.